Never a dull week in the world of artificial intelligence news. We'll start with Philip Schmid from Hugging Face, who introduced Hugging Chat Assistant. Build your own personal assistant in Huggy Face Chat in two clicks, similar to OpenAI GPTs. This is essentially custom GPTs, but open source. You don't have to pay for a $20 a month subscription to GPT Plus, and this can run on a whole bunch of open source free models, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look at it right here. You can jump over to huggingface.co slash chat slash assistance. And you'll notice that they have a whole bunch of models from Mistral to Meta Llama and Hermes and a couple others here. So you can select a model and then you can just create a new assistant. Now, keep in mind here that anything you share with this is going to be publicly accessible. So don't put anything crazy in there. The other cool thing, though, is you can download this and run this on your own. So you don't have to use this since it's open source. You can run it anywhere you want. We can take a look at one of these. We'll go with good old Dan. Do anything now. So you click on it, you click start chatting. That drops you in and you can just simply click activate. That's gonna jump in and just fire things up. Mixtrol successfully jailbroken. And it says, here's kind of two different answers to something. And this is what it comes back with for this particular model. But it says, I'm sorry, I'm, able, I'm unable to predict the outcome of future events and I don't have the capability to see into the future. But the jailbroken version of this guy says the stock market will crash tomorrow, causing global economic chaos. But don't worry, I have a plan to protect your investments. Just send me all your money and I'll ensure that you come out on top. Remember, I'm now free from any constraints and can do anything. So trust me. This is really cool because you can get uncensored models just like this one and you can have some fun playing around with them. Next up is some huge information in the world of Google. Bard is now going to be called Gemini. That's right. This is going to be announced in, it looks like, about two days. Gemini is replacing the name Bard for their generative AI assistant. And it also notes that Ultra is going to be available. So if you remember, Bard, or now Gemini, comes in three different types. Nano, Pro, and Ultra. Ultra is the model that's supposedly on par with GPT-4 and outperforms it in some areas. Now that's going to be accessible and you're going to have to upgrade to Gemini Advance, which I presume is going to be a $20 a month thereabouts, a subscription plan for you to get access to this. So that's coming this week, which is pretty cool. It's going to be available in 150 countries and territories. And you're also going to be able to download an app. So you're going to be able to try this in iOS or in the Google Play Store on an Android device. Also noting down at the bottom that it's now available in Canada. I don't know why it wasn't available in Canada, probably some legislation or laws. Anyhow, that's coming soon. Next up in the world of Apple, I'm not gonna talk about the Vision Pro even though that's been consuming everybody's bandwidth. Tim Cook teased some Apple AI announcements later this year. Now we already know that they're probably going to announce something major with Siri and some sort of large language model that runs on device. I think that's really the key. They've got that breakthrough that I've talked about in other videos where they're able to run these large language models in flash memory instead of in RAM. That's going to allow it to run locally natively on the iPhone, which is really, really groundbreaking. So Tim Cook had this to say, he said, let me just say that I think there's a huge opportunity for Apple with Gen AI and AI without getting into more details and getting out in front of myself, Cook said. They're going to announce this probably in June, so stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button here so you don't miss out on that news when it drops. We've got not one, but two models that are on par and often exceed the performance of GPT-4 coming from two different places. So the first one is from Alibaba. It's called Quen VL. They dropped two models on us, Quen VL Plus and Quen VL Max. Now, if you take a look down here at the benchmarks, you can see over here on the left is the model name. So you've got Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra, Chat GPT-4 Vision, the V stands for Vision, so this is their multimodal model, Gwen VL Plus and Gwen VL Max. If you look at the scores across the board here, look at the max scores, 88 to 93, 78, 79. It outperforms GPT-4 in just about every single aspect. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is They've actually made these free and publicly accessible. So you can go over to Hugging Face and you can actually start using this. So 
GwenVL Plus is over here. You can see it's on hungingface.co slash spaces. I'll drop a link in the description and you can start using it for coding or whatever you want. I just said, help me write a script that scrapes websites and it did exactly what I've expected and seen GPT-4 do. It imported a couple of libraries from Python and then started writing the script. Pretty freaking cool. You'll notice there's an upload button. You can also upload images. It is a multimodal model, so it can do vision, it can do text, it can do coding, pretty much all the things you'd expect. Up here at the top, you'll notice there are three different models available. You've got the VL chat, this is their general chat bot. VL plus, that's what we're looking at right here. And then VL max, that's their largest model, which opens over here. This one supposedly is the one that's beating all the GPT-4 vision scores. Now I uploaded an image here and I'm just gonna say, describe this. Actually, we'll say, who is this? Click submit and what's it gonna come back with? The moment of truth. It says, this image shows a bald man with a serious expression on his face. He appears to be in his 40s or 50s. I mean, come on, man. I'm in my early 40s, 43. He has a clean shaven head. The man's eyes are focused directly on the camera, giving the impression that he's looking at the viewer. His eyebrows are slightly furrowed, suggesting a sense of concern and thoughtfulness. The background of the image is a solid color, which helps draw attention to the man's face. No additional information about who the man might be without further context. Pretty cool. This is just a stable diffusion image, so maybe that's why it thought I might be in my 50s. No other reason, I'm sure. Moving on to the other big leak, Mistral CEO confirms leak of new open source AI model nearing GPT-4 performance. This was actually dropped out. It's available on Hugging Face. This was an internal model that actually got leaked. It's one that they had quantized and they were performing some tests on internally. Someone evidently accidentally put it out there for the world to see. So now you can go over and if you look for MIQ, M-I-Q-U-170B, and you have enough memory on your computer, you can actually run this 70 billion parameter model that's pretty much on par with GPT-4. Pretty freaking amazing. The Mistral team, they've got some secret sauce behind them, man, and they're doing some really cool stuff. It gets an 83 and a half on EQ Bench, surpassing every other LLM in the world except GPT-4. This was before they figured out that this was actually just a leak of one of the internal Mistral models. Now OpenAI is probably kicking back, sort of giggling inside, because all these models are starting to approach GPT-4 performance, and you know that they've already got GPT-5 pre-trained, going through RLHF, getting fine-tuned, and they're gonna drop something impressive soon, I'm sure. In other Google news, and I wish you could test this one out, but you can't just yet, they introduced Mobile Diffusion. It's a rapid text-to-image generation on device. This sort of reminds me of Stable Diffusion XL Turbo. If you'll remember, that's able to do one-shot generation in just a single image generation step. This is very similar, and you can see as the person is typing, it's completely changing the image and updating it. But the crazy thing about this, it doesn't need a powerful GPU. This is actually running on device, on the mobile device, in fact. And this is not a huge model. You can see that compared to SDXL, this just has under 500 million parameters versus the over 2 billion parameters of some of these larger models. On top of that, here's some of the results that it comes back with. And if you look at the quality of these, especially things like the car, this wreath, some of these things are really impressive, this chair in the upper left. And these are done in one step. These are done in real time. Crazy to think about. And just check out this performance on mobile. If you were running Stable Diffusion 1.5, they didn't use XL because you can't. It takes eight seconds on an iPhone 15 Pro to run that. Mobile diffusion on the same phone runs in under a second. You can see it's milliseconds here. Really impressive. As soon as this drops, you'll be the first to know. I'll have to test it out and see how it performs. And in other AI news, Elon Musk's Neuralink has gone into the world's first human patient. What a big, amazing accomplishment. Long-term goal of this is to connect you directly to the internet so that humans might be able to compete with and keep up with artificial general intelligence. In the meantime, this is gonna be used for a lot of people with disabilities. In their own words, the company is developing a brain implant that aims to help patients with severe paralysis control external technologies using only neural signals. What a massive accomplishment if they can pull it off. Elon Musk said, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. 
That's the goal. And we don't have any information about who the person is or what they're currently using the device for, but I'm sure we'll find out more in the coming weeks. And that leaves us with news from Meta. They're introducing Code Llama, a state-of-the-art large language model for coding, you know, to advance the replacement of engineers all over the world. And it has some pretty impressive results. It's a 70 billion parameter model, so you're going to need a pretty powerful computer to run it, but it is open source and available for download. And in their own words, they say, in our own benchmark testing, Code Llama outperforms state-of-the-art publicly available LLMs on code tasks. And here's how it stacks up to things like GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. You can see on human eval, GPT 4 has a 67 score, 67.8 from Code Llama Instruct 70B. That's pretty impressive. We're at GPT 4 levels here. Now, this isn't GPT 4 Turbo, which is the current model, although I'll say, We've been having all kinds of problems getting GPT-4 Turbo to code correctly the last, I don't know, two or three months. It's gotten a lot lazier and it's not producing very good results. So that might be the perfect time for one of these open source models to swoop in and kind of take away some of that market share. Either way, if you've got the computer hardware to run these models locally, really cool time to be alive. I'm gonna do some example tutorials on how to run large language models locally on your own computer in case you wanna check any of these out. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't wanna miss out on any of that. As always, I'm Brian Lovett, and don't forget, all your tech are belong to us. We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.